Right, Paul, first question for the fans. Um, can you give any clues as to the areas of player recruitment you'll be focusing on in January or what type of player you're going to be looking for? Um, I think if teams I've had before, I like pace in the side, so I think pace is important. I think getting a good balanced squad, um, uh, you know, in terms of having enough aggression in the team, enough defensive qualities, but also enough attacking qualities. So um, I think between now and the window opening, there's going to be lots of training sessions and lots of games, so I can really get a better idea of what's required. Okay. After one week of, of training and, and one game, are there specific things that you think Cheltenham do well, do badly, or don't do that they should be doing? I think I think you know. I said to the players after the game, we had a few go down with cramp, so that wasn't good <laughs> at all. And um, I'm hopeful that will improve with working with the fitness coach and the tempo of the sessions that we do. So um, I think we'll pick up on that, the sharpness of our play. You know, I want us to move the ball quicker. I, I don't like us when we're slow with the ball, which we were for Oxford's goal, caused us problems. And I just think high standards, I just think the whole way through, it's about training yourself to have the highest standards for the 90 minutes in the game, and that comes from the training ground. Um, what's the biggest thing you've learnt from your previous managerial experiences? You've got to win. <laughs> You've got to win. No, it's, I've learnt a lot, and um, it's a good question, actually. Um, I've learnt, you know, working with different people, okay, different attitudes and uh, different staff, inheriting players, um, recruitment, um, you know, when to, to, to make changes, when not. But ultimately, the, the, the biggest thing management has told me um, and this is my fourth club, is to be true and be honest and say it as you see it. Players are not silly, and they're our staff. Um, all I'm asking for is honesty, hard work. Um, I'll set the game plan out in terms of the strategy and how we do things, but you've got to come in with a smile on your face and you've, we've, we've got to train um, with real determination and, and then we'll get a nasty cutting edge, which we need to get up the league. Uh, do you agree with the likes of Xabi Alonso who says that tackling is no longer a desirable trait in modern football? Um, I'm not quite sure what, what he means by that, but I, I think the, the tackling's gone out of the game. I think stand on your feet is important, if I'm honest. It's a skill to, to defend and stay on your feet and not you know, commit yourself. Um, but at the same time, I do like the boys to put their foot in. I think it's a big part of the game. I think it's a... It's a physical game, football. It's um, it's not a non-contact sport. And I think, you know, 11 v 11, the, the first thing I say to the players is win your individual battle. And if we do that all over, um, you normally have success. And to do that, you need to tackle. So, yeah, that's my take on it. Okay. There's quite a lot of questions about tactical preferences and things like that. But one question is, um, do you think the concept of rigid formations is, is on its way out? Do you think teams have to be more fluid now? Or do you think there's still a place when you have traditional... Shapes and four four two and that sort of thing. I think you can you, you can try all the things you want. You can try four four two, four four one one, three five two, three four three, diamond, anything you want, but it's got to suit the personnel you've got. So I've got some lovely ideas on how I want to play football. I've got some lovely ideas of, of how we want to get to goal. But you have to look at the group that you've got. This is what I've had to do and see what suits them and, and try and get round pegs and round holes. It's not always easy if you've got a, a squad that's maybe imbalanced or you know too many midfielders or uh, you know not enough wingers. Then you have to make do. But ultimately, it's getting the players into the most com the most comfortable they can be in their positions. Okay, um, we've touched on it already, I think, Paul. But what do you think is the key things to make a successful team in League Two? I think togetherness. I think I say to the players, you know, we need to be vocal. There needs to be unity. I think if a team senses that you're not together, it's it's they're a happy team and they'll they'll go after you. I think if they see that you're you're together from the first minute, and you know, it's, that comes from uh, communication. Um, that's the first starter, and then obviously, you know, you you have to defend the boxes. In, in the League Two, actually every league. I think if you watch the Premier League every week for all the great football that's played, it's a, it's when teams switch off on a corner or second phase that undoes them. So yeah, all of those things I, I've got a good idea of of 
how I've won games and I've got a fair idea how I've lost games. So just try and implement that as much as possible. Okay. Um, do you think promotion's still achievable this season or do you think it more consolidation given the current position? Is it a big ask? I don't know. You don't know football's strange. It's a strange game. All, all I have to look at is, look at our league position. Okay, so if I was coming in here and we was in the playoffs, there'd be a reason behind that. And there's, there's certainly a reason why we, we're 18th in the league. Um, and the goal's against Column. So I'd be crazy not to look at that. I have to look at the goals against Column. So as you saw on Saturday, um, okay, we didn't play expansive football. It was nowhere near how I want to play the game. But we only conceded one goal. So that was success. And we need to build on that. So it's about gradually you know, stepping out of that defensive framework and try and be a bit more expressive. Um, but, but always remembering that it's important to work hard, whether you're a winger or a defender, which that, that's what that's been the theme this week, actually, is um, the, the more realising there's no free ride here. Um, what's your perfect Sunday, apart from this Sunday, which obviously a win in the FA Cup, but perfect a normal Sunday? Sunday yeah. A perfect Sunday is a win after a Saturday, a Saturday win, um, waking up, three sets of tennis. Some nice breakfast and then watch the football. That was good to me. <laughs> I need to find a tennis club. I can't. I can't find a tennis club. East Gloss. I'm missing. Yeah, it. I'm missing it badly. So, there's anyone out there that, that wants to get me in a tennis club? No, I'd be much appreciated. Okay. Um, there's been a few questions about the young lads, the first year pros that yeah. that have been brought through this season. Do you, what do you think is the key to making the transition from youth team to first team? It's obviously a big step up. Yeah, is that is that something that you've, you've well, done before? Yeah, it's going on out there now. You'll see an 11 v 11 game this afternoon, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The, the, the 11 that played the weekend, they've gone home. They've earned the right today, this afternoon, to go and have a rest, and the other boys are out, you know, getting an hour and a half of 11 v 11. And it's a great opportunity for the kids now because, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate of, of youth coming through, and I've got a great, great relationship already with Russ. And Jamie, and it's something I'm going to be pushing, and they need to be as close to the, the pros as possible. Um, and then you've got the development group again. Now it's a case of me looking at that and saying, do they need to go on loan, okay, or can we develop them them here? Um, but certainly, uh, obviously, at the moment I have to look at the first team because this game's coming up thick and fast. But I've got my eye now on the development group, and already this morning, you know, the likes of of you know Harry and Bobby, I call them boy band, but they're they're looking good, you know, and it's up. It's down to me now to sort of try and keep them and educate them and keep them interested because it's tough when you come in every day and you're not playing. Every player wants to train a week and then play, so I want to try and get to that as quickly as possible. But they're just going to have to be patient at the moment. But we've spoke about it with the board. The board are really keen to bring young players through, and we've got to have a game plan. And I, you know, I think that the, the key is to not give up on them too early you know let's try and keep them till they're 22 let's let them completely develop and then make a decision okay um what's the best and worst thing about being a football manager uh i don't think there is a there is a bad thing i've got to be honest totally honest it's not a bad thing i realize that now because um i always say if if like sort of come friday night um you can relax knowing that you've given everything you know you've tried to cover every detail you've tried to give the players and the club the very best opportunity to win the game and um, I always do that and you know I, I enjoy my life outside of uh, management I try and switch off and it's a nice balance and we're, I'm, I'm blessed to be doing what I'm doing and so are the players and we should never ever take that for granted. Okay, um, Chatham Town Ladies have asked if you'd like to be the guest of, of honour at one of their games um, so that's an invitation for you. Tennis? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah definitely yeah one million percent yeah. Okay, and, uh, have you had a discussion with the chairman about the FA Cup? How important? How much of a difference that can make to uh, January? January plans. Do you think he's mentioned it? <laughs> I think it's going to make a great big difference. Yeah. Um, no, it's massive for the club. Uh, it's it's huge. It's a huge game. It's a huge game for them as well, you know, because of the finances involved in it. And I know better than than, than anyone because I've been part of some big runs, and it's superb. It's absolutely superb. And. Um, I'm desperate, for, desperate for us to get through. I really, of course, I am. You know, I'm going to do everything possible. But at the same time, there's two teams playing. 
And if we're at it on the day, even even sometimes in the FA Cup when you play really well, don't come off here. All I want us to, I think, Cheltenham fans would agree with me, let's, let's see us go out and have a real go at them, okay, and give everything, and hopefully then at the, you know at the end of the game, we'll be in the hat for the third round. Brilliant. Cheers, Paul. Right.